I am 38 years old with a master's degree. I am a high-quality single woman. I originally thought that in Hangzhou, I could find an equally high-quality bachelor. But until I turned 38 this year, I realized that those high-quality single men didn't even look at me. Now, the ones chasing after me are rural bachelors. In other words, if I want to get married, I can only marry into the countryside. Oh, no. oh boy. I don't think you should be calling yourself a high-quality anything. Uh, that's just awkward. It's really up to others to evaluate you. And it's better if you come off as educated than mentioning your education. That comes up as a little weak. I mean, certainly you might mention it in a, in a job context, but if you have to, but otherwise it's not something that you mention at all. It's like, oh, look at me, I, I, I have a master's or something. Oh no, it's over. I really can't get married anymore. I'm already 34 years old. What should I do? My mom is still waiting for grandchildren. Do I really have to resort to buying sperm for artificial insemination? It's so scary. I want a man. Okay. This this is my undergraduate degree from Qingdao University of Science and Technology, and this is my master's degree from a private university in Seoul. You don't need to understand Korean. This is the official certification of my master's degree, stamped with an official seal. If I want to falsify any documents, I'd be in prison. I graduated with my master's degree in 2015. In 2016, I obtained temporary residency in Shanghai. Here are the property deeds for my two houses. This is the purchase contract and keys for my property in Jiaxing, Shanghai. You can see my fingerprints at the bottom. If the rain stops in a couple of days, I can show you my house in Jiaxing. I couldn't find the purchase contract for the house in Hangzhou, but I'll show you the property there in a few days. This is one of my BMW cars, and this is one of my electric cars. Although it's not valuable, it's generally enjoyable to drive. I'm 34 years old with a master's degree, two houses, and two cars. Previously, I earned around 300,000 yuan per year, but now it's around 150,000 yuan. If I were a man, I'd be highly desirable in the dating market. There would be many girls interested in me, and I could easily pick someone. But just because I'm a woman, I have little value in the dating market. The people others introduced to me are either financially destitute older bachelors or divorced individuals with children, or even unemployed rural singles. Does a woman lose her value as she ages, even if she's accomplished? I mean, you, you don't get to decide who's interested in you, right? I mean, sounds like she has a lot of options, and mostly people who are, like, uh, financially not, not quite there. And what she has is not that impressive, but... And what is she even looking for? My requirements aren't particularly high. I prefer someone over 1.8 meters tall. Good looking. Okay, but that's pretty... Pretty high in China. King, fair skin, with big eyes, preferably humorous, and able to have fun with me. It doesn't matter where they're from. No. From, but they must have that in Korea. Although each of these partner preferences sound... Damn. Have that in Korea. Although each... I thought she was going for me, but I'm safe with the last of them. Normal. It's difficult to find someone who meets all of them. Her name is Jati, a true Beijing girl. At 38, Jiaki. she still has a sweet appearance with a car and a house. Since she was young, Jati has had a princess dream with a room filled with various Hello Kitty decorations. As the only child in the family, are you kidding me? Her parents treat her like a princess, praising her even for washing dishes at home. Seeing his daughter getting older, her father often advises her to be more practical and not set her partner's standards too high. Although Jati still doesn't believe it's a problem, her desire to get off the singles market remains strong. I really hope that someone will ride a white horse, tread on colorful clouds, and come to me saying, I finally come to pick you up. You're my wife for life. Did she just say that? And ironically? Okay. I might not place too much emphasis on material things. My bottom line is that she should be able to afford a down payment in Beijing. That's my bottom line. If I were to pursue a girl at the same age, to be honest, I might feel a bit short-changed because, in my opinion, the girl's most precious asset is her youth. How intense is today's dating scene in China? Take this 37-year-old female master's graduate, Huang Yan, for example. She was once a top student on campus beauty. Growing up as an only child in a well-off family, Huang Yan received meticulous care from her mother throughout her schooling. Her father insisted she keep her distance from boys and focus on her studies. Over time, this led Huang Yan to have little interest in dating, and she never cared much about others' opinions on the matter. Graduating with excellent grades from medical school, Huang Yan smoothly transitioned into becoming a doctor at a top Beijing hospital. At the start of her career, she was. Yeah, it a little bit sucks to to learn medicine as a woman because it's gonna take forever. To finish it and then you possibly have a lot of debt in the first place and you almost have to start your family while you're in uh medical school and then presumably you're going to be working long hours too so i don't know it's it's a little bit rough she was young beautiful and had excellent qualifications leading her to have high standards for her partner after several unsuccessful blind dates excellent qualifications she finds herself at 37, feeling the pressure from her parents and worrying about not being able to find a spouse. With the help of a best friend, her marriage agency introduced Wang Yan to a divorced PhD graduate who was four years younger. They decided to meet at a tennis court since both of them enjoyed sports. The man wore black framed glasses, had a square face, and a robust physique. After an exhilarating game of tennis, they both felt invigorated. He went by the name Lao Han. Wang Yan felt a slight attraction towards Lao Han. They then went to a hot pot restaurant for dinner. Initially, they got along quite well, but during the conversation, Lao Han lost interest. It, it, yeah, Lao Han doesn't look very interested. Wang Yan. Lao Han. They said you've never been in a relationship before. Wang Yan. That's right. I've never been in one. Do you mind that I've been divorced? Wang Yan didn't directly answer and pondered for a moment. I think the person matters more. Lao Han persisted. I don't know how girls view this matter. Feeling that the topic was too sensitive for a first meeting, Wang Yan ended the conversation with just a few words. Yeah. I think he is. I mean, being vague, you know, might get others to not dislike you, but they won't like you for it. So, my versions go all out. Words. After Huang Yan changed the subject, Lao Han's demeanor turned cold. He felt that Huang Yan wasn't being sincere enough and couldn't discuss the matter with him openly. He felt she wasn't interested in understanding him or discussing their future together. The blind date ended shortly after. For Lao Han, his previous marriage didn't work out well. Besides looks and physique, his ex-wife wasn't suitable in other aspects and didn't bring warmth to the family. Now he wanted to find someone who could take care of the home, a mature woman to settle down with. On the way home, Huang Yan discussed Lao Han with her best friend. It was evident that Huang Yan still had some interest in Lao Han and was willing to continue getting to know him. However, when she tried to add Lao Han's contact information to her phone, he declined. Feeling confused, Huang Yan wondered why things could continue. Her friend analyzed the situation, saying that when Lao Han asked how she viewed his divorce, she responded with an indifferent attitude. Lao Han felt she wasn't mature or sincere enough, so he didn't see the need to waste time.
Furthermore, besides the difficulty in getting married, the emergence of single women may be more due to not wanting to marry. They hold an attitude of not settling or forcing themselves into marriage. I was born in 1983, so I'm 40 years old this year. I'm single with no children, and I think I might end up being single for the rest of my life. Recently, many people have been introducing potential partners to me, but I declined all of them. I'm not very interested in meeting new people, as getting to know someone from scratch feels exhausting. And if it doesn't work out, it's just a waste of time. In the eyes of many single women, economic stability is one of the important. I mean, fair enough. If you want to be alone, just be alone. It's, it's not a problem. Important factors for a stable marriage. Therefore, the phenomenon of brides requesting dowries before marriage is quite prevalent. But the high cost of dowries has skyrocketed marriage expenses, causing many young men to hesitate. There's even a girl demanding a dowry of five million yuan. Such a demand. Uh. But the thing is, like I, I saw another video. The thing you are also competing, not not with the the Chinese women, but all all the other women. So they might be getting uh, brides from other countries, especially uh, nearby. Or they were like, oh yeah, sure, I'll, I'll come for free. Demand undoubtedly caused a huge uproar in the matchmaking market. Not like a, a money stack rose or whatever this is. Do you expect a dowry for your marriage? Of course. Can you give us an estimate of how much? I think with my qualifications, it has to be at least five million. Qualifications? Man, could you tell us about just five million yen? I prefer a man who is one point eight meters tall, owns a house and a car. Okay. And earns a million yuan annually. I meant your personal qualifications, not your criteria for a partner. My personal qualifications? I have a bachelor's degree. I'm one hundred and seventy centimeters tall. I live with my parents and I work as a receptionist with a monthly salary of three thousand five hundred yen. What? So she makes three thousand five hundred and lives with her parents. I'm not judging. I'm just saying that that is her level, and uh, nothing else. I live with my parents and I work as a receptionist with a monthly salary of three thousand five hundred yen. After the video was released, it sparked heated discussions online. Just grow old slowly in the sweet anticipation of love. Some people mocked. You should marry an alien instead. In recent years, the number of single women in China has surged. According to statistics, there are currently about one hundred sixteen million single women in China, forming a unique social trend. Among them, the increasing number of unmarried female white-collar workers are referred to as high-quality single women. According to the prevailing Chinese saying. What? Female white collar workers are referred to as high quality single women. According to the prevailing. They're calling themselves that? Chinese saying they are let alone because they are outstanding. High quality single women often have a relatively high social status, are economically independent, and pursue freedom in life. But this group also faces significant negative societal judgments. Today, female white collar workers in the workplace have more freedom and choices, but they still face considerable pressure and distress regarding marriage. They are often pressured by parents, relatives, and friends to get married, to stop pursuing their careers, lower their standards, and stop being so picky about potential spouses. Because usually, successful women like these are looking for partners who have better economic conditions and higher social status. They hope to find successful men with annual incomes of tens or even hundreds of thousands, or who own multiple houses and have very. And not just a law, by a lot. Uh, well, if we take these ones as a sample, but maybe the, these ones were diluted, so we shouldn't be uh, extrapolating too much. Various requirements regarding height, personality, etc. But truly outstanding men are few in number. As a result, the age of these leftover women keeps increasing, but their ideal partners never appear. Their mentality of preferring to remain single rather than settle for less keeps them persistently single. In the long wait, youth fades away irreversibly. But what causes anxiety among older women is that, compared to men, women's fertility is naturally limited by age. Medically, pregnant women over 35 are considered to be in the category of advanced maternal age, while men can still have normal fertility even into the 70s. The consequences of advanced maternal age, such as a fivefold increase in the probability of congenital deformities in newborns and an increased risk of maternal complications, are even more worrying and frightening for many women. Clearly, the natural structure of women's bodies cannot be altered, and this is one of the key factors that strikes many single women. Not only urban white collar workers, but also rural women are unwilling to marry and start families too early, largely because their standards are too high. After all, in these years of urbanization, many young girls have gone to cities to work after completing their education. They see a better and more comfortable life in the city than in the countryside and believe they have opened their horizons. Unconsciously, they raise their standards and requirements for a partner. So when people from their hometowns introduce them to men of similar family backgrounds, they are basically not interested. This also leads them to remain single at an older age. Going back to the roots, there are two major dilemmas that young people face in relationships nowadays. The first dilemma is the materialization of emotions and the pressure of love. But in modern society, everything comes with a cost. Realistic factors such as heavy economic burdens and... But the thing is, like, you're not the only one who's living in a... under a economic difficulty. So... Can you really marry up? That that just that just means that most women will not be able to do that. And high childcare costs indeed are important factors influencing young people's decisions to marry. Economists have introduced the concept of marriage economics. Marriage costs include not only material costs such as housing, education, childbirth, child rearing, yeah. and even dowries, but also opportunity costs such as time, energy, and the freedom of singlehood that one has to give up. Many men refuse to enter marriage due to very practical reasons, mainly insufficient economic capability. They cannot afford the cost of buying a house, a car, or paying for dowries. For most young people, the economic pressure of marriage is too great to accept a life. I mean, honestly, just suckers game. If you're in China, at least you would want the foreign bride or just leave China altogether. I, mean, I would feel like a total sucker paying a dowry. Life budget for that. Living alone is seen as more liberating and relaxed compared I mean, would you pay 5 million yuan for that girl that makes like 3,500 and lives with her parents? And also, you probably shared ownership of your house and your your car and whatnot. Um, compared to the financial. Well, I mean, for me, that's not even close. Special strains of marriage. Nowadays, love is based on a high consumption model. Throughout the year, various holidays require red envelopes, gifts, and surprises. Various activities during dates are generally not cheap, requiring a certain level of financial capability. The second major dilemma, in addition to material value, is that relationships now also demand emotional value, such as companionship, care, and thoughtfulness. All of these require time and energy. If you work hard and have a decent income but lack time, it's also difficult to have a successful relationship. Many. Did any women mention anything emotional? They're just looking for someone. Well. 
way out of their league, essentially. Many young people's relationships ultimately end in breakups because they cannot sustain providing both material and emotional value. In such a demanding dating environment, most young men are becoming increasingly disillusioned with love and are choosing to remain single. China has a popular... Yeah, look at this. So, I mean, there are plenty of dudes out there. They're just playing League of Legends. Looks like I found your husband. Hmm? The population of 239 million unmarried young people and the average age of first marriage has been delayed to 28.67 years old. Some experts suggest reasons why young people are avoiding marriage and relationships, including having a fixed social circle, being too introverted, or not enjoying socializing. Some people disagree with these comments, with many online comments stating that the most direct reason is poverty, life being too difficult, being unable to afford marriage. This is... okay, I understand, but it's, it is not just poverty. I mean, if the, the chick co comes in with expectations of like, oh yeah, do you have like at least mi millions uh, to marry me, then yeah, that's... Not just poverty, and arguably you can't even make that much money. Maybe, maybe if you, if you work really hard, and by by the time you're like like mid or late thirties, you may have made that much money. But realistically, this is just a, a test of whether you have rich parents and and nothing else. Marriage or simply not having enough money. In 2023, the Chinese economy was not thriving due to various factors such as the downturn in the real estate industry, local government debt issues, and high youth unemployment rates. Many young people held negative views about the future and marriage. Even in 2024, economic experts are not optimistic about the prospects of China's economy. Many believe that the economic growth rate in 2024 will be lower than in 2023. Due to the sluggish real estate market and stagnant consumption, the severe situation is expected to continue. Today, there is a trend on the Chinese internet called Four Nose Youth, meaning no relationship, no marriage, no buying a house, no having children. Facing the pressure. No buying a house, no having children. I mean, it's easy to say no if you can't even get this. I mean, this is a very, very, very old story. I mean, it, it really, um, I mean, maybe Ace of Fable would be the one of the earliest examples that I can bring up. The, the fox wants to have the grape, but like they can't have it, so now they, they say, like, oh, it's uh, it's probably sour or something. I mean, For real estate market and stagnant consumption, the severe situation is expected to continue. Today, there is a trend on the Chinese internet called For Nose Youth, meaning no, no relationship, but can you get a relationship? I mean, I'm not saying this is a value judgment on them necessarily i mean the chicks can get a relationship either not not the one they want no marriage no buying a house but can you buy a house because i say like oh yeah i say no to having a palace and like yeah but i can buy a palace either so no having children so yeah i guess you need to get rich and then then you can have a gold digging core as a vibe no relationship, no marriage, no buying a house, no having children. Facing the pressure of marriage, 32-year-old Zhang Yu recently told foreign media, marriage, childbirth, taking out loans to buy a house or a car, all of these are debts overdrawing the future. When the economic downturn is evident, if there's no other source of income, we can only tighten our belts. Zhang Yu lives in northeast China and is currently working in the infrastructure industry. The projects he is involved in are led by centrally administered state-owned enterprises in China, which seems like an enviable job. But even so, his industry has experienced significant pay cuts this year. Salaries have generally decreased by 30%. I'm secretly grateful that I have a marriage and had children. Otherwise, it would be a big problem. Zhang Yu believes that the Yeah, that's, that's messed up. And not just it's already messed up if the prices go up, but if your salary goes down, that's a real double whammy. The poor economic situation has a direct impact on marriage rate. He explains that the one-child policy in the Northeast region has been well implemented. After marriage, both couples have to bear the economic burden of four elderly parents and children, which creates immense pressure. According to iResearch's quantitative research survey on the unmarried population, there is a predominant fear psychology among them towards marriage. Thirty-six percent of them express fear towards marriage. Latest... Also, if the woman comes in with so much expectations, I mean, does it even matter that she has uh, a degree? Because, like, I suppose the degree would be relevant in that aspect that maybe she's making good money. I guess, I guess that's somewhat relevant. But if she's making like 3,500, then like, what is the worth of that degree? I mean, essentially it just gives her higher expectations, but not higher salary. So. The survey shows that the average cost of marriage in China is about 330,000 yuan, more than eight times the per capita disposable income of That is even assuming that she continues to work. 2023, which is 39,000 yuan. It reflects the heavy economic pressure that marriage expenses impose on both spouses and their families. Like many Chinese young people. That's insane. It's on both spouses and their families. 3,300? I mean, 300... 30,000 yuan. Families. Like many Chinese young people facing uncertain economic prospects, 32 year old Victor Lee, a wealthy entrepreneur from Shanghai, is also unsure if he can afford the various costs of marriage. He recently attended a social event in Shanghai specifically designed for highly educated. No, don't even think about it. Just just leave China. And GG. Victor Lee said, For us, marriage is a very expensive affair, especially in big cities like Shanghai. Economically speaking, you're just gonna be broke. The pressure is quite significant for young people, including myself. The event was organized by Julia Meng's company, Julia's Events. Julia Meng stated that an increasing number of people aged 35 and above are actually giving up on marriage. Young Chinese attendees like Jack Jiang expressed a desire to get married, but high housing prices, uncertain job prospects, and the overall economic situation are not conducive to marriage. This 32 year old entrepreneur stated, It's not that we want to be single, but rather it's the urban structure and economic conditions that have led to this outcome. Yeah. And guys are not the magic solution to this. Uh, they have as much money and as, as good of an opportunity as you. And in the best, even less so.